This is me, and this was my test stream the other night, with zero preparation and setting stuff up on the fly. And this is how it went. There's no mystery why Half Life did did that. Did that topic. Yo, yesterday, yesterday, Sally yes. to him. Now there's no doubt that the stream was terrible. Now fixing the stream could be summarized by a single phrase using that very stream. You know what me advice? <laughs> Buy expensive stuff. <laughs> Also, I could have actually prepared and not just run home and start plugging stuff in and figuring things out after I pressed the go live button. But how bad was it actually? And how bad are my equipment? Oh yeah, and this is Razor Media. Hey there, Razor here. So here's the thing, I'm cheap and so the equipment I have is quite inexpensive and thus currently most of my hardware has been bought from AliExpress. Ah, good old AliExpress, the haven of quality. As it relates to the stream though, in this video, I'm gonna take a look at all my cheap hardware individually, what they cost, and what are their drawbacks and downfalls. Now first of all, let me explain. This quote unquote test stream was to test if my new to me Dell Optiplex 5070 that I bought on eBay, for the record not AliExpress, was a good option to stream on YouTube while stabbing my friends on Discord, watching my gameplay and making fun of me in the process. And before this, I was working with a uh, Dell Inspiron laptop from 2015, so this Optiplex is an actual upgrade. And this upgrade was an integral part of any of this working. So now let's look at the real problems. My AliExpress hardware. First on the list is I have two USB capture cards, and of course both of them are from AliExpress. Surprised? Didn't think so. Moving on. The first capture card can only graciously be described as, and I'll try to say this in one take, the 4K capture card 1080p 60fps, HD camera recording box, HDMI compatible to USB 3.0 PC live streaming grabber recorder. You got all that? Good. It looks like this and is sold all over the internet from different sellers and with different branding. And this is the one that I use to capture in-game footage. Solely because of its HDMI pass-through abilities, akin to its more expensive counterparts, think of something like the Elgato HD60X, where I can capture gameplay to my PC and also have the ability to pass through that gameplay to my TV, where I can sit and actually enjoy the games comfortably. The alternative would be to using the tiny streaming software window which would also introduce a little bit of a uh, delay, which obviously is not that ideal. But does that mean it's a good capture card? <laughs> eh. Now don't get me wrong, it's not terrible, but it's not exactly the best either. The latency is pretty decent for the low price, and it has microphone in and headphone out ports, which allows you to listen to the audio that you're capturing from whatever device you're capturing it from, and also add in your own audio from, say, a microphone. But here's where the problem lies in that. While the audio out is decent, however a bit tinny if you're listening it straight from the capture card, though weirdly enough it sounds fine when you record it, and you would think a microphone in and headphone out would be a great feature to add to such a cheap capture card. But the lack of the feature to monitor or control the gain of the microphone or the volume of the capture means you, you can't just plug a microphone into the thing and uh, you know just start recording because either your mic audio is going to drown out the capture audio or the capture audio is going to drown out the mic audio and there is no software or any physical hardware buttons to manage any of that so you're shit out of luck and slightly over to the positive side it does seem to do 1080p 60fps quite decently from what I can tell and it does seem to work in adjust to some of the weird resolutions that some of my older consoles can push out but back on the negatives there seems to be a huge problem with screen tearing and I'm not exactly sure why because it doesn't seem to happen on some of the consoles it happens on the older consoles it doesn't seem to affect my screen recording of like say for example a PS4 it could also be a case where I'm just not watching closely enough to recognize patterns. And a friend of mine recommended that maybe it's just the heat and I should try to uh, add a heatsink. Which yeah, I have considered because it does get pretty toasty sometimes. But I have yet to correlate the uh, screen tearing to any overheating or extremely high temperatures. So is this cheap capture card the reason why my stream was so awful? <laughs> Probably not, but um, I should probably get a decent capture card. But for now, I think this one should work fine for what I want to do. 
It's not like I'm recording 4K content or anything like that. And yeah, I see the 4K on the front of the thing. I, I strongly doubt that this thing can actually record 4K. If it can, that would be a plus and good on this old cheap uh, capture card to be able to do that, if it can. But all my consoles are on the older side, so I'm pretty much used to capturing uh, anything below or maybe maximum 1080p. And buying a new capture card isn't really in the budget right now, considering that an HD60X is about the price of what I paid for my computer. <laughs> The second cab record I use is for my camera. And can you believe it? This one's actually cheaper than the previous one. <laughs> of course it is. I mean, look at this thing. Shaming aside, let's read the description, shall we? And again, let's try to do this in one take. <clears throat> Ready? USB 2.2 video capture card, 4K HDMI compatible video grabber live, streaming box recording for PS4, Xbox, phone, game, DVD, HD camera. Ah, AliExpress. Always so elegantly worded. So this one is more akin to the Elgato Camlink. In fact, from the other multiple sellers of the exact same product, you might even see the word Camlink in the description. And much like the Camlink, it does not have HDMI pass through, which for this application, it doesn't need to, because all I needed to do is give me what the camcorder is seeing. The camcorder already has a screen on it, so I can reverse that and be able to see what I'm seeing. Its important job is to give me a low latency video capture that syncs up with my microphone. But does it do that? Yeah, it actually does it pretty decently. Man, it lines up with my microphone for the most part. However, it does have its one or two hiccups where it might go out of sync a bit, but it'll normally sort itself out. And strangely enough, it doesn't seem to have that same screen tearing thing that the uh, first capture card has. And the quality is pretty decent, even though it doesn't need to be perfect since it's going to be squished to the uh, top left corner of the screen. So its main job is just to uh, line up with the uh, microphone properly. Now speaking of microphones, I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett Solo 2nd Gen. I do not have the headphones, I do have the microphone and interface and that's what I'm actually recording this video with. And most of my recent videos I've, I've actually used this to do the voiceovers because it, it sounds really nice and I really like it. And surprisingly this is one of the hardware that's not all that cheap. Not sure exactly what it cost though because I, I, didn't, I didn't pay for this one but uh... Before I got this one and before I even started making a whole lot of videos, I started looking for some microphones and uh, one of the real contenders was either a Blue Yeti or a Blue Snowball. But since I got this, I stopped looking so I don't know if there are any other good ones out there. I don't need to know because I'm not replacing this one. Did I mention being cheap yet? Again, it's pretty decent though I seem to lack the ability to uh, control my gain properly. Also I need a boom arm so I can bring this thing a bit closer to my face and turn the gain down because I don't know if you noticed from the uh, stream, you could hear all the nature sounds in my background. So I, I need a, a boom arm so I can bring it to a bit closer to my face and thus I can turn the gain a bit more down so I can uh, be a bit closer to the microphone because I, I'm not sure if you could see up at the top right there, I have the uh, microphone a bit off to my left hand side and I have to lean over to it. And sometimes I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even over there and uh, so I have to turn the gain all the way up so you can actually hear me without pointing my face directly to the microphone. Also another side note, I for the stream, because I was so rushed and unprepared, I didn't even bother installing the microphone drivers. <laughs> now that's a that's a problem, isn't it? Or it should be, but I plugged in and it, it, it just worked, so I just went along with it. I knew I should install the drivers, but I knew that required restarting the system and I already started um I already started up Discord and I already started streaming so I was like I'm not gonna restart this thing now. So what I did instead was run it without the drivers. I'm not sure how what problems that caused or if it did cause any problems at all. Um however while writing this script <laughs> I uh I thought about it and I just installed it right away while writing the script so it's installed now so hopefully it should be perfectly fine the next time I I do all this and recording this voiceover it's installed now i hope uh, it made some um it made some improvement at least okay so with all those captured how do i capture gameplay from these old consoles you may ask well first of all i hate av cables so i've replaced basically all my av cables with component be curious as to what the difference is to the left is av and to the right is component now you can see av only has three cables while component has all of five. But why is that, you may ask? Well first of all, AV transmits all its video data over a single cable, and that's this yellow one right here. And the other two, red and white, are for left and right audio channels. So in order to pass through all that color data through a single cable, all that data has to be slightly compressed together to run through that one single cable, 
and so you have a uh, poor quality basically a uh, much lesser quality now with component as you can see here we have a red green and blue cable and you still have the additional red and white cables for our left and right audio channel however the red green and blue are separate video channels and separating the video into multiple color channels means uh, much more data at a much faster rate at much better quality as well. In fact, I can even get 1080p out of these component cables. Whereas the old standard AV cables may max out at like a 480p or 480i, these things will transform your older consoles. And here I have a video comparison of a uh, AV to component cables on this one game here. And as much as they're better, they're still cheap. Remember, these are also from AliExpress. I bought one for my PS2 and I also have one for my old lightning struck original Xbox from the uh, previous video that I posted uh, a, a while back. If you didn't watch that, go watch that. That's an amazing video. And you may also ask, how is it that I'm capturing component and even AV video, but my capture cards only input HDMI? Well, that's where these things come in. These are converters. More specifically, AV to HDMI and component to HDMI. Both of them again are from AliExpress on the cheaper side of things, but they both work. Well, almost. Because you see, upon receiving my component to HDMI the first time I plug it in, it started to smoke. Yes, like uh, starting a fire kind of smoke? Yeah. And it also just didn't work. I mean, maybe that would explain the smoke. So I messaged the seller and asked for a refund, to which I got, but I still wanted a converter. Um, so what I did was. In a regular Razer Media dangerous fashion, I attempted to repair this thing. Because yeah, I know I could just use the money that I got from the refund to buy another one and see if I could get that one in a better condition or actually working. But you gotta remember, this is AliExpress. These things may take like an entire month to get here. Or sometimes, uh, I think in this case it was like 15 days or so, but it's still a long time. So I decided to repair this thing. So I took it apart and the burning was coming from a single diode. So I enlisted the help of Reddit because I have absolutely zero experience of fixing something like this. And again with the help of Reddit, I fixed it. And the problem was apparently from the factory they turned this diode backwards. Ah, good old classic AliExpress jank. And I know, I know, I could get some better option like the uh, RetroTink or some other uh, upscaler to get the best quality in the uh, highest resolution possible out of these old consoles but um, you got to remember that's not exactly the uh, theme of this channel and I can't remember if I mentioned being cheap. So is this converter any good? Well yes and no. The good thing about it is that it seems as if it's the same quality as plugging my console straight into my TV. Uh, it seems to be outputting the exact same resolution and the exact same quality without any quality drops. However my gripe is with the audio. It has this weird staticky noise whenever there is no activity. I'm not exactly sure what this is from or what the cause is. Maybe it's my cheap component cables or maybe it's because I tinkered with this thing. Who knows? It works. End of story. And I mean, how can you complain when it captures footage like this? Well guess what, even with that I still have a few complaints hit up my sleeve here. Most importantly of which is this damn button. This is a digital slash analog audio button. I have no idea what it does because I don't see it on any other cheap converter and it's so annoying every time this thing restarts. I have to remember to press this button or there is no audio that's going to go to the capture card and sometimes I have to press it a few times before it even attempts to push any audio out. On a side note, uh, there's actually an aux port on the back of this thing I didn't even notice until editing this video. Not really going to talk about the uh, AV to HDMI converter because it's basically the same thing. The only difference is that it has a uh, 720p and 1080p switch on it that doesn't seem to actually change much but as a simple comparison tool it, it works fine and it's currently what I use on my uh, GameCube because have you seen those GameCube component cable prices? Jesus! Now moving a bit away from the hardware let's go over more to the software side of things. Ah Windows, we all love and hate these simultaneously. The only reason why the stream was so awful is... I was trying to figure out on the fly how to share my in-game audio and video both to uh, Discord and to the stream simultaneously. Now that was proving to be a bit frustrating and uh, I kinda just gave up and just continued to do what I was doing. But I think that's what resulted in all the echoing and uh, audio stuttering. I could work on that and I, I will work on that for future streams. 
And honestly, I don't think it's any of the cheap hardware that caused any of the uh, stuttering and uh, voice crackling and stuff. I'm pretty sure it's just my uh, my own input errors. And maybe I have to check my streaming software again. And by the way, I'll be streaming maybe soon again. Um, make sure you subscribe and, and turn the post notifications on so you know when I'm streaming. So yeah, sharing the game video capture both to uh, the streaming app and to Discord at the same time wasn't necessarily the problem. It was sharing the uh, audio, the game audio, to both Discord and uh, to the streaming software at the same time that was causing me some some problems. Because not only did I want to share the game audio as well, I also wanted to hear the game audio because you want to hear the game that you're playing while you're playing it, don't you? But I also wanted my friends on Discord to hear the game audio while they're watching it, right? Yeah, I just couldn't figure that one out at the time, and I'm pretty sure if I just had time to prepare and had sat and actually, you know, thought it through, I could actually figure it out. And there's this saying that says, if you fail to prepare, then you should prepare to fail. Yeah, that's tended true throughout the entire stream, and um, that's why I kind of had this stream as a test stream to see if I could just get up and just jump to the computer and do a quick stream and how well it would work or how badly it would, it would be and it wasn't actually all that bad because sometimes it, it went okay, the audio was fine and then for the most part it was terrible but, <laughs> but when it was good it was decent right and um, I'm actually looking forward to doing it again but in a better way so you guys can actually experience it properly. Oh and more on the software side, I should mention that for the streaming software I'm using Prism Live Studio. Why are you not using OBS you may ask? Well I don't know, Prism was just pretty much a carryover from the uh, previous PC. It didn't seem to like OBS that much because I wasn't able to uh, have OBS open with the game capture in there and then pass that over to Discord so smoothly. It would be extremely choppy first of all and then the audio would be awful. It, it would just be a whole slugfest uh, on, on my performance and my computer would be just screaming <laughs> the entire time so I just settled for, for uh, Prism instead because it's much more um, uh, resource it's, it's not as resource heavy, so I, I actually like using it, and it has a whole lot of built-in features that I just really enjoy. This is not sponsored, by the way. I just really like using Prism. It's 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 pretty it's a pretty nice uh, streaming software. Maybe I uh, I'll try OBS again on this on this newer PC here, but um, I think I'll be going I think I'll be going ahead in the future to be using Prism more because it just has a lot of features built in. So yeah, that's pretty much what I'm working with. Am I planning to upgrade any of this hardware? Uh, of course I am. Making these kind of videos and, and streaming this kind of content is something that I've always wanted to do. So if I can improve all this, I surely will. So whenever I have the opportunity, I will invest in some better hardware, of course, so I can make some much higher quality content. And while you wait for that, uh, of course, I'm gonna ask you again to uh, turn that notification bell on and go, go back and watch a few of my past videos don't go back too far though I, i'm not the biggest fan of some of those videos but go back and watch that uh, xbox video if you haven't watched them maybe the dsi and the ps2 videos those are those are cool also now with that i'll be making much more content and i will see you guys in the next video hopefully this one won't be too far away <laughs> i'll see you guys